Welcome to season three of the Questions With podcast, hosted by Quest Ventures, the top venture capital fund in Asia. I am your host, April Ong Vanya, and through this season, I aim to uncover inspiring stories of notable entrepreneurs across Asia who have incorporated ESG values and achieving impact into their business model. Follow me on a journey of discovery as I speak to accomplished entrepreneurs from various sectors ranging from fashion to finance. When we talk about social entrepreneurship, we often forget the driving forces behind them, the silent supporters, constant cheerleaders, and the ones that enable innovative and impactful ideas to take off. Today, we have invited a guest from such an organization dedicated to developing and nurturing the growing social enterprise sector in Singapore. On this episode, we have the honor to speak to Weishan Ko, the lead of strategic communications at RAISE, an organization formed out of a cross-sector collaboration between the Ministry of Social and Family Development, National Council of Social Service, and the Social Enterprise Association to develop the social enterprise sector in Singapore. Founded in 2015, RAISE has since committed to providing social entrepreneurs the resources to succeed, such as embarking and embarking on the creation of the Sustainable Impact Accelerator with Quest Ventures. Today, I hope to learn from Weishan about the future of social entrepreneurship in Singapore. Hi, Weishan. Welcome to the Questions with Podcast. How are you doing today? Hi. Hi, April. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. I'm doing great and very excited to be sharing here today. Awesome. So I see that you wear both hats as the lead of strategic communications at RAISE and the director of the Sustainable Impact Accelerator at Quest Ventures. So could you share with us about how these two roles complement each other and if it has given you different perspectives? Sure. I think um, definitely has given me a very uh, new perspective because it's the intersection of uh, two very different industries. So if I could share a little bit more about RACE. Um, RACE is a sector developer and more recently positioned as an ecosystem developer. At the start in the early days, we were focused on gathering more social enterprises into the organization as a membership body. But increasingly, we realized that as the sector grew, we needed to grow the support for the sector. And that's why um, our role has, posi- has been repositioned um, towards building ecosystem partnerships. And the partnership with Quest Ventures is one great example uh, of such an initiative. Because there is limited uh, amount of things and resources we can do as a small organization at RACE and only with partnerships um, we can do more together. So being in these two roles, um, I think it allowed us to help the social enterprises in very different ways. Uh, RACE coming in more from the impact perspective and Quest coming in with the business and venture perspective. I completely agree. Collaboration and partnership can really accelerate progress and we'll be able to achieve our goals together much faster, perhaps. So how about you? What made you decide to be, you know, part of this role or to this community growing and developing the social entrepreneurship ecosystem in Singapore? What is your story, Rayshan? That's a good question. Um, I think very early on in uh, from my university days, that's when I first got introduced to the concept of social entrepreneurship. I think I was um, always very passionate about um, doing good uh, from a community service perspective. You know, I go out as a volunteer um, and then I took a business degree. I thought the two things were completely separate, but only after I was introduced to the concept of social entrepreneurship did I realize that I could combine um, two interests and passions and um, do it concurrently. So I discovered that um, by using business as a medium, as a tool, as a force to to do good can be very, very powerful if done right. So that was how I started. Um, As I grew, you know, in my career, I still feel that there's much to be done, especially in Singapore, to develop the social entrepreneurship space. We are all but eight years old as an organisation. And we have grown, while we have grown um, the number of social enterprises, uh, I still look forward to the day where, you know, social enterprise is, is something that is a household name, you know, like everybody understand what a startup is, what a SME is, what a MNC is, but um, not everyone still has a clear idea of what a social enterprise is or what it means. 
Um, some people still think they are non-profits. So till the day that uh, we get um, everyone on board, uh, the idea and concept of understanding and um, the right mindset of what a social entrepreneur should embody, um, that's where I hope uh, the, the, the enterprise, the social enterprise space will grow and develop into. Thank you for sharing that. And maybe zooming out, right, with what you just shared. Why do you think social entrepreneurship is so important in the world of business? Hmm. I think um, at the start, I guess I saw social entrepreneurship as another way of doing good. Um, so that was something that uh, maybe would be more relatable to the nonprofit, the charity sector, because they traditionally have been doing good, but maybe not so sustainable. They had to rely on donations. So I saw that as a very important shift that there was another way. But increasingly, um, myself as well as the ecosystem have started to see social entrepreneurship as another way of doing business. And in fact, it could even be argued at, as being the only way of doing business moving forward. Um, I think when we talk about social entrepreneurship, it takes a more long-term perspective to doing business. Uh, it looks at creating value, not just for um, you know, short-term financial returns for, stakeholder, for shareholders, but it looks to create long-term value for various other different types of stakeholders, like customers, like your employees, uh, like partners, like suppliers. And um, I believe that only with a long-term view and value creation mindset will a business be able to last long um, and be successful in the long term. I couldn't agree more. I mean, this vision of having social enterprise as the way to build any sort of enterprise or even big business to really um, have sustainability at the forefront and how they run things. And yes, hopefully this vision that we, we share <laughs> will become the norm uh, that we see in the future, not only in Singapore, but around the world. So of course, I'm sure you've seen the great opportunity and the threats um, on social entrepreneurship. So what do you think are the key points, right? That we can look at as the opportunity as well as the threats that we have to look out for. Hmm. Maybe I'll talk about the threats first. Um, so I think that um, social entrepreneurship as a concept and a model, a business model, has been around. But globally, there is no one fixed way. But that's the nature of social entrepreneurship. It is complex. There is no black and white. Um, some people akin it to the concept of a zebra, you know. Um, you have both the black and white on it at the same time. You just can't tell whether it's black or it's white. It's just both. Um, but precisely that, because it's such a grey area, I think there are players that come in with um, not so nice or good intentions. There are people who use uh, impact or, you know, I think the term greenwashing, impact washing is something that uh, we hear about quite often. And to me, I feel very scared and threatened by that because reputation takes years to build up but it can crumble in a single moment with a bad actor so I do hope that um, as more players jump on board the bandwagon I would love to see more players jump on board the bandwagon but I hope with the best intentions um, and the right way forward yeah um, in terms of opportunities I guess we see a lot of opportunities in um, the younger generation the younger generation so far has always um, been portrayed as people who look at um, purpose, uh, meaning and purpose is important to them, whether choosing their career or even in their consumer purchase decisions. So I think we have a huge role to play in helping them understand the concept of social entrepreneurship. Um, whether it's about them going on to become social entrepreneurs in the future or even, even if they don't, um, having a good understanding of what it means or what it takes to run a successful social enterprise uh, will be very helpful because they will go on to become ecosystem supporters. Um, they will join big organizations with larger resources which can lend their support to the smaller social enterprise sector. Yeah. That's a very good perspective on how everyone or different roles or different industries and sectors can be part of this social enterprise ecosystem, not only the social entrepreneurs themselves. I wanted to add that point that they could be future customers to these social enterprises, right? So it's really an entire ecosystem that we want to develop. Now, what do you hope to see change in the future for the social enter enterprise scene in Singapore, even globally, you know, given the threats that you've seen already on the ground and, and what we look towards 
shaping, right, for the future. So what kind of changes do you think we should take? Mm. I think in Singapore, um, there's much more to be done. And uh, how I see the sector growing or changing would be in the form of um, two things. One, having more diversity for of social enterprises coming in. I think that um, currently people have a, I guess, set interpretation or stereotype of what a social enterprise could look like, perhaps because some of the social enterprises are more public facing in nature. But actually, with the right mindset, social enterprises can exist across many different business sectors in many different um, business models. A lot of times, we don't see the social enterprises because maybe they are in a B two B model, or they, you know, are in a sector like the logistics sector, which um, a, a lay consumer doesn't get to interact with them. So um, I do hope that there will be more diversity in terms of. Businesses coming in, realizing that their business can be an impactful one, um, and the second would be definitely more support coming into the ecosystem. And I think that is already happening. Um, that people are starting to realize that this is a viable model. Even the partnership with Quest is a testament of the support that we have um, for the sector because. Traditionally, I would say that social enterprises are seen as small, maybe not so profitable, struggling. Um, but with a VC coming in to look in this space, uh, with more ecosystem partners uh, coming in, I think that is changing, and that's uh, something I definitely hope to see. And uh, globally, I do think that is there is huge opportunities for a collaboration. Um, social entrepreneurship, I think, sometimes uh, is seen or social enterprises seen in isolation in uh, locality. But with uh, a lot more partnerships happening with global organizations, um, I do hope to see our social enterprises in Singapore going overseas. And of course, those um, overseas coming into Singapore because there's much to learn. And uh, if there's anything to take away, uh, collaborations will definitely help to create greater impact together. Indeed, and by nature, there's a lot of hyper-local focus or perspective with a lot of social enterprises around the world, and some have similar models, and some actually making the same mistakes. So having these sort of tie-ups and collaborations across regions would be great learning for you know fellow entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs. So of course you pointed out right having a VC like Quest Ventures coming in. We also know that there is an increasing focus on ESG. Global Globally. So how do you foresee this um, playing into the whole development of the social enterprise ecosystem? Mm. We definitely do see that um, even on the ground, there is a lot of pressure to look at ESG. But I think that pressure um, has traditionally come top down, right? With the bigger players, the MNCs um, being pressured to report on their ESG. But I think what's um, interesting to note is maybe um, for the bigger players, ESG, scope one, scope two, um, disclosures, those are things they can do on their own. But uh, when it comes to their scope three, which is essentially scope one and two of the players further down their value chain, um, that is where we need to get the smaller players involved. Um, and I do think that a lot of ESG talk uh, is still very much focused on the E because uh, for the for the fact that there are clear frameworks, it's um, easier in that sense to track and it's more measurable. The S of ESG, which is the social part, is uh, where I think there is huge opportunity, um, especially for the social entrepreneurship space, because um, that's at the heart of a lot of the social enterprises. They look at the human-centered impact, which uh, in some way it's a bit harder to articulate, to measure um, whether or not there is a real outcome. You know, sometimes we have to rely just on outputs and, and hope that there is an outcome. But uh, we hope that the larger players, um, as they look at ESG, they don't forget about the S because we see a lot of opportunities where they can work with social enterprises which specialize on the S. So I would say, um, for example, looking at inclusive hiring, um, a, for a big MNC which traditionally have or is new to this, um, it might be difficult. They don't know where to start. It requires them to change the policies. Um, it requires them to uh, change their expectations when they interview someone. And how how best to do this, you know, is, is something that a social enterprise who has been on the ground advocating for social um, for inclusive employment can do very well. So they could, you know, establish partnerships in that sense and, and then grow together in that space. 
Definitely. The social enterprises on the ground can be partners and collaborators for larger groups or larger companies to make sure that they create that impact together. And I really agree on that challenge of impact measures, especially for the less tangible type of KPI. So that's quite a, you know, I would say a, a whole community or a whole um, industry challenge, but hopefully with the same direction, we're able to move forward and, you know, really create that impact. So do you think what's happening now in Singapore also shows that it is the right place for fostering social entrepreneurship? Yeah, 100%. Um, and and I think also partly because I feel that social entrepreneurship is, is a mindset. Um, in uh, the social enterprises that we see, a lot of times what drives them to um, be successful in the long run or to hang on when times get tough it's because they have the right mindset. The founder or the founding team has very clear set of values and commitment towards um, filling a social gap through the use of their business. And I think that uh, is a mindset that any business can adopt wherever they are. More so in Singapore's context, we have a very good and supportive ecosystem. In Singapore, actually at RACE, we take a slightly different approach to some of the other regional players. Some countries in the region have chose to legislate um, social enterprises. You know, they set up as a social enterprise. It might end up as a tick box. Um, after they get all the resources, you know, it's, it's hard for them to, to continue. Maybe they just close it and re-register. But in Singapore, it's uh, a lot more grounds up uh, in our approach to ecosystem building. When we started, we didn't want to um, box us uh, up what it means to be a social enterprise in such a fixed manner. We let the ecosystem grow and develop and we are small and nimble enough to change to the needs of emerging social gaps. So um, at RACE, we are always trying to be on the ground, listening to what new ideas or new problems our entrepreneurs want to solve and then pivot our resources to help them accordingly. So I would say um, it's a bit of a <laughs> self advertisement here, but um, RACE definitely is here um, on the ground with the social enterprises um, and, and ready to move to the needs. Yes, it's really listening to the people and the players uh, from the grassroots that really helps build that community. And obviously, you know, it's still growing. So um, kudos to what's already been done. But I think moving forward, you can only grow bigger and better um, with Raise. So, I mean, moving to your other hat as the Director of Sustainable Impact Accelerator, right? So. You know, before we go into some questions about that, can you give us a little bit of overview and background what this program is about? Right. So Sustainable Impact Accelerator, as um, April has mentioned, is a collaboration between two organizations. And it was a collaboration with a goal to support high growth, scalable um, enterprises which focus on human-centered social impact. So the human-centered part um, is a result of uh, Razor's focus on social enterprises being more human-centered in nature and also because I think there are a lot of other accelerators which look at um, environmental impact and um, all the industry-specific accelerators. So we felt that this is a gap that we want to address and um, provide support for entrepreneurs in this space. So the program is a collaboration where we bring two parties and the resources and network of two parties together um, where entrepreneurs uh, come on board for a 10-week program with us. Um, and to me, I, I feel that this is also very important in terms of setting the stage and changing perceptions of what social entrepreneurship means uh, because this uh, is kind of challenging some of the stereotypes on or impressions of what people have uh, and imagine when they hear the term social enterprise. We go back to what you mentioned that it's also about mindset, right? Mindset yeah. thing, mindset shifting and changing. So um, with that, you know, what are the other roadblocks that you think the social entrepreneurs face uh, or continue to face, right? And how do you think SIA, you know, has helped them overcome these challenges? Hmm. I think a social entrepreneur is a... Social entrepreneurship is a tough path to, to, to choose. Being an entrepreneur is hard enough. 
Um, but we like to think of these social entrepreneurs as having to commit to a double bottom line and you know, just on top of delivering financial results to make sure they're sustainable, they have to deliver on their impact results. So I guess that also means that they have to work doubly hard um, in terms of roadblocks, a lot of them face the problem or difficulty of balancing um, between business and impact. And there is no right formula because every business finds its own way and own strategy to find that right balance. Um, and uh, another key um, challenge that we see also is growing the team. Um, and growing to new markets because while you start off maybe small, um, very passionate, but as you grow the team, how do you keep that values and passion, um, you know, pass that on to the newer members of the team? How do you make sure everyone's aligned on the vision? Um, and the fact that as a social entrepreneur, I think there are more bad days than good days. So how do they keep going strong and um, in terms of new markets oftentimes uh, they will realize that apart from a new business environment that they have to understand and research about there is also a new impact landscape um, Singapore being uh, in Southeast Asia is also very different from our region uh, in terms of the social gaps that we face so th those are things that are typically um, roadblocks and uh, we help to guide our entrepreneurs to navigate that space yeah, that's very important, especially when each country or even each community, right? Even within the same country, <laughs> there are different um, uh, realities that you have to adapt to so that your service or your product would still remain relevant and of course, viable as a business. So you were saying that taking the path of social entrepreneurship, right? is an interesting and a big challenge in and of itself. So what do you think makes one a successful social entrepreneur or perhaps what do you think it takes uh, to be one? That's a very tough question. Um, it's something that I ask myself a lot as well. Um, I don't think I have found a, a one answer that I can stick to all the time moving forward. But at least from what I've seen, I think it takes someone with a lot of um, uh, a lot of heart. But I would say take that with a with caution, right? Because sometimes when people think a lot of heart, they think that, oh, you know, I just keep giving and I keep giving. I think that's one part of the equation. The other part is someone who is able to pace themselves and know uh, how to balance that with enough um, business sense. Uh, at race and, and on a personal level, I do believe that social enterprises first have to be successful businesses before they can be successful social enterprises. Because uh, if your business is not sustainable, no matter how much heart you have, uh, if your business collapses the next day, you're not going to be able to support the people you want to support. Um, then it, it loses the point. So I think that they have to have a lot of heart, but they need to have a strong heart. They need to be able to um, withstand the difficult days. They need to be able to make difficult decisions. They need to be able to know when um, their, their tipping point is because sometimes um, when you invest too much of yourself into the business, uh, it gets difficult to make difficult decisions, especially when you are working with um, persons from disadvantaged backgrounds. They come with their own uh, challenges on top of yours that you have to deal with. So um, it's uh, definitely not for the faint-hearted. Indeed, and obviously you're not also just talking about, let's say, the community you want to impact or the people in your team. It's really the community or the society at large that also is a factor um, in embracing perhaps your idea and supporting your social enterprise. Now, I know we just came out of like this entire like um, historical moment or chapter with the COVID-19 pandemic, which has accelerated a lot of even more existing challenges already around the world and social problems that we have already been facing. Now, how have you seen the landscape or the social enterprise scene um, change or perhaps what types of business ideas have you heard of um, given this global context that we, we just are getting out of? Hmm. I think um, that's an interesting question because there definitely has been heightened awareness and interest uh, around social gaps in this time. Um, and in fact, uh, I would say that at, at RAISE, we're still quite uh, proud that a lot of the social enterprises have managed to survive through this difficult time. A lot of businesses um, couldn't withstand 
um, the the pressure and the circumstances, and and they had they either had to scale down or or you know just close. But for the social enterprises, they had to hold on, um, and they had. Uh, I would say I've seen them put in a lot more effort to hold on precisely because they um, are working with people who needed their help um, and it was interesting because with that we also saw the community and the ecosystem coming in with more resources to help them to make sure that um, those who were you know I guess the most left behind or the most is disadvantaged um, who needed the help the most were getting the support uh, of the social enterprises. And I would say that um, new business wise, uh, we do see quite a few um, popping up in uh, looking at healthcare being because it has just been thrown into uh, limelight where healthcare is huge. Uh, we have also seen more um, ideas in the aging space because that's um, also something where uh, it's a focus for everyone in Singapore's uh, aging population. Um, we have also seen uh, quite a few in the like food sustainability um, sector because in a lockdown situation, suddenly food, especially in Singapore's context, is a huge topic of interest and, and more and more um, are looking to solve it. So I think a lot of some of these uh, ideas that are popping up is also aligned to some of the government's um, plans and call for focus areas. So in Singapore, there is the government has put out the Enabling Master Plan 2030, the Green Plan. Um, so along with that comes uh, new ideas in that space. That's very true. I mean, I'm really in agreement with how it was also a big challenge for the social enterprise to survive, not only for their own sake as entrepreneurs, but for the communities that they serve. And, you know, we go to that point or that uh, um, idea where when people start talking about impact or social business or, you know, placing ESG at the forefront of your business, it really costs your business more um, financially or even beyond, right? What do you think about that? Is that true? Um, what are your insights around that? Yeah, I think um, two perspectives to that. If it's done blindly, wrongly, yes, it would definitely cost more than it should. Um, but if done right, I think it will cost more in a short run. But I would see it as an investment for the long run. Uh, oftentimes, working on a social gap, uh, the cost comes in the form of, uh, let's say, R&D for innovation because you're trying to solve a gap in a new way, some in a way that someone has not um, deployed before, there will definitely be costs in creating a new path. But once that path is created, um, it is uh, for the long run um, something that will reap returns, but you just have to be patient. Um, and in, in some other circumstances, that cost in the short run could look like, you know, making adaptation to your business, whether in the form of the physical space, in order to let's say make it more accessible to you know people who might not be able to assess it, or making your services more affordable to people who would benefit from it but they could not otherwise have paid for it. So there is some short-term costs that social enterprises typically have to incur, but they see it as more of an upfront cost and an investment to be here for the in the long run. Um, because by by creating this value for different players in their different stakeholders in their business, um, we call it, I guess um, I've heard the term a license to operate. Their business then gets a license to operate from the community because there is buy-in and there is long-term value. It's not a once-off um you know, pity purchase, but rather because I'm creating value, um, they get long-term customers and that would make up for the, the loss that they have to put up in the front. Definitely, there are a lot of um, uh, work or at least there's a lot of investment, time and patience in building that community of supporters, whether they are your stakeholders, your community partners and your customers um, all together. So we are talking about a lot of these challenges now, Weishan, uh, of social entrepreneurship, but we do know we need more. We do want to encourage um, young generation or even, you know, existing businesses to embrace social enterprise as a model, as a mindset, as you say. What do you think needs to be done um, to encourage this and keep going and keep growing this ecosystem? Mm -hmm. um, I think 
we already see more partners coming in so that's great but often i think what's lacking is um, more case studies um, we want to show more successful cases that it can work uh, uh, it, it, it kind of to ins two, two folds one to inspire entrepreneurs that are on that journey that it is possible to see light at the end of the tunnel right because we want them to um, feel inspired and and uh, hang on and stay on to their commitment and secondly to also change perceptions I think um, it's very important that uh, we change mindsets and people look at them as businesses not as charitable uh, organizations or non-profits um, because that sets a different um, impression when they make a purchase, right? Maybe if I see them in a more charitable light, I make a purchase perhaps out of pity. And that's not what we want. Uh, we want to make sure that they are buying it because they are already, they, they believe in the, in the product and the service and they are getting a value out of it. Um, and I think a lot of social enterprises are moving towards uh, making sure that their products and services are indeed creating value and not um, just to sell the, the pity story. That's something that we avoid um, completely. Um, another thing is to get more support in. I think a lot of social entrepreneurs have good heart, but they might uh, be a bit lacking more in the sense of um, how can, they can run their business, especially as they start to grow. So I think bringing in ecosystem partners, mentors um, would be very important to help them on that journey. I think um, mentors can save a lot of time for the entrepreneur to guide them. Um, and time is uh, almost, you know, it's very valuable I could say for more sometimes even more valuable than financial support because speed to market and to implement can make or break um, the business indeed we circle back to what we were talking about partnerships collaborations and really creating that supportive ecosystem uh, to really try to achieve these successes together and hopefully we are building up that sort of catalog or, or case studies uh, from Singapore even around the world so maybe before we wrap up, a few more questions for you, Aishan. In your line of work, you must have had moments with a lot of, you know, a great sense of accomplishment with the impact and the purpose that you are trying to create in your work. Can you talk about maybe one of the most memorable ones that you've had so far? That's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, I think um, for memorable um, accomplishments, I would say that I find a lot of joy and accomplishment in uh, working with the startups on the ground because for me on a personal level I, I I see myself as a you know jack of all trades I think jumping into one industry and one specific social cause is not something uh, I can do and commit to day in day out um, so when I see these entrepreneurs that I work with so committed to um, their work it, it really inspires me and I you know do my best to help them so moments where I feel that um, they are accomplished is when you know I see them um, on stage making a pitch I I see them um, growing to new markets. I see and I hear from the people that they are supporting how much of a difference they have made in their lives. Um, those are moments where I just uh, feel that it is all worth it. Um, a lot of the work that we do um, in the ecosystem, it, it, there is meaning to it. There is um, a collective effort to make a difference in someone's lives. So while I don't, um, you know, have a direct hand at that. I help all these people um, who is working on the ground and, and that gives me lots of joy. That's amazing. And please do not, um, you know, do not be uh, shy about sharing or saying that you're part of that development or growth because I truly believe that we need more people like you. We need more ecosystem builders and organizations like RAISE and, you know, the Sustainable Impact Accelerator to really support our enterprises, our social entrepreneurs. Actually, that's one thing. I, I did have one last question for you, but I'm going to make it two if that's okay. I want you to actually have a bit of a word for other social enterprise ecosystem builders people like you people like us uh, that's really trying to support and develop this community and move this forward or leapfrog this movement that we want to see um, how would you keep them motivated and maybe a few encouraging words for them hmm. 
I think um, working with social entrepreneurs requires a lot of patience. Um, that's the first, which is something that I feel uh, as compared to working with, uh, you know, regular enterprises, startups, I think partners will demand a lot more speed, a lot more progress, a lot more returns in a shorter time frame. But social entrepreneurship is more complex because oftentimes, apart from the business, they have to deal with um, human, you know, situations uh, and and that takes time. Um, it also changes uh, very frequently because depending on uh, you know the community that they are working with, the people come and go, and that requires a lot more patience in, in supporting them through those ups and downs. Um, and I guess a word of encouragement is that um, it's definitely needed. This this social entrepreneurs um, oftentimes feel maybe very alone um, they feel very strongly for what they are doing but uh, it, it gets lonely sometimes so to um, provide them the support give them the community um, will help them to uh, hang in there on the difficult days know that they are not alone um, and I think that's important in terms of you know just everyone's mental health like, I think it's very difficult to be a social entrepreneur and um, so far like I I, I you know, from what I've heard, the social entrepreneurs that I work with, they, they find a lot of help in uh, being in a like-minded community. And that gives them a lot more um, drive and also a shortcut, right? Because sometimes they, they realize that I don't have to go through this from zero to hundred. Someone else have gone through it. I can learn from them. Yeah. It's incredibly important to have organizations like yours, community builders like you. So really, Kudos and thank you for all the work that you do. And hopefully this message reaches out to other community builders to keep on going. And of course, also aspiring entrepreneurs and you know the founders out there who are hustling <laughs> and making that impact happen. So actually, um, the last question was really some advice for these aspiring entrepreneurs, right? Those who are maybe listening in, wanting or exploring social enterprise. Uh, what maybe one or two pieces of, of advice you'd like to share with them before we close out? Hmm. Um, I would say first thing would be to think long term from the start. Know what is your, um, in here we call it theory of change. Know what is it that you are changing. Um, know your people because I think Sometimes people enter into the space um, having a very uh, lofty vision. They want to change the world. They want to make huge difference um, without even going down to speak to the users or, 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 the, or the beneficiaries in, in some cases. Um, so I would say think long term, know what is it that you are aiming for and know the steps that it takes to get there. And in um, identifying these steps, I would say don't be afraid to go out there and speak to people and try things out because only by trying you would know um, and test the assumptions. And um, the second thing I would say is to um, be agile, to have a mindset that um, you need to adapt and move along with times, um, especially in social entrepreneurship. Um, I think uh, the space changes a lot. And when dealing with human Right, humans are complex people, um, and with all the people that these entrepreneurs you want to help, uh, it requires you to uh, really be on the ground with them to learn and unlearn something, some assumptions that you had. So it's not about going there with a fixed mindset and going on a straight path. It's about being ready to, you know, make twists and turns and U-turns sometimes um, in order to go in the longer journey. <laughs> Yeah, as I hear you say these things, you have to be a good driver, huh? <laughs> entrepreneur, but yeah, that's driving change and driving impact in your community. So to all those tuning in, um, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs, uh, we say go for it. Um, and of course, check out uh, SIA and of course, raise and, you know, find out how you can be involved in their community. Once again, Wei Shan, thank you. Thank you so much for being part of today's episode. And thank you for all those tuning in to this episode of Questions With. And we have Ray's here featuring the organization's lead of strategic communications, Wei Shan Ko. For more episodes like this, be sure to hit the follow button on whichever platform you are listening from. I am your host, April Ongbanyo. Till next time. <laughs>